hands towards me. आप लोग सब मेरी ओर इस तरह से हाथ रखिए हाथा डोले भी टूट गया प्लीज क्लोज योर आईज आंखें बंद कर लीजिए और संतुलन के लिए सबसे पहले आप हमारी ओर मैं अंग्रेजी में कहूंगी लेफ्ट हैंड करिए और राइट हैंड जमीन पर रखिए प्लीज पुट योर लेफ्ट हैंड टूवर्ड्स मी एंड राइट हैंड ऑन द मदर अर्थ फॉर द बैलेंस डावा हाथ माझ्याक करायचा आणि उजवा हात जमिनीवर ठेवायचा संतुलनासाठी धर्माचा सर्वसार हेच आहे आपल्यात संतुलन आहे <coughs> आणि संतुलनासाठी डावा हात माझ्याकडे आणि उजवा हात जमिनीकडे करायचा लेफ्ट हैंड ऊपर की ओर उजवा हाथ मजाक डावा हाथ वर
हमारे और कट पुट बोथ द हैंड फोर्स रेस्ट देम ऑन योर लैप अपने मांडी पर आराम से दोनों हाथ ऐसे छू
श्री गणेश अथर्व शीर्ष नमस्ते गणपत वमेव प्रत्यक्ष तत्व वमेव केवल करतामेव केवल भरतामेव केवल हरतामेव सर्व खल ब्रह्मासी साक्षात्मा हृत वच्मी सत्य वच्मी अवत्वक्ता अवश्रोता अवदाता अवधाता अवाचा नमवशिष्य अवपश्चातापूरस्ता अवोत्तरात्तावदक्षिणाता अवचोर्धरा पाहि पाहि समंता वामयस्व चिन्मय आनंदमयस्व ब्रह्ममय सच्चिदानंदीतीयसी प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी ज्ञानमयो विज्ञानमयसी सर्व जगदीदे सर्व जगदीदिषति सर्व जगदीदी लयमेशति सर्व जगदीदी प्रत्येति भूमिरापो नलो नीलो नम चारी वक्पदा गुणत्रयातीता देहत्रयातीता कालत्रयातीता मूलाधारस्थितों शक्तिमक योगिनो ध्यान ब्रह्मा विष्णुस्व्रस्व इंद्रस्व अग्निस्व वायु सूर्यस्व चंद्रमा ब्रह्मभुर्भुव स्वरो गणादी पूर्वुच्चार्य वर्णादी तदनतर अस्वार परतर अरधेन्दुसित तारेण हृद्ग तवस्व गकार पूर्व अकारो मध्यम अस्वारूप बिंदुरुतर नाद संधान सघंहिता संधि सैषा गणेश विद्या गणक ऋषि निचृत गायत्री छंद गणपतीर्देवता ओ गणपत नम एक विदमहे वक्रतुंडाय धीमहि तन्नोदंती प्रचोदया एक चतुस्त पाशमकुशारिण रदम च वरद हस्तैर्बिभ्राण मूषकध्वज रक्त लंबोदर 
शूर्पकर्णक रक्तवासस रक्तगंधानुलिप्तांग रक्तपुष्पुभोजित भक्तांकं देव जगत्कारणमच्युत आविर्भूत सृष्टो प्रकृते पुषा परम ध्यातम स योगी योगिना वर नमो व्रातपत नमो गणपत नम प्रमथपत नमस्ते अस्तु लंबोदरायकदंताय विघ्ननाशिने शिवसुताय श्रीवरदमूर्त नमो नम साक्षाश्री आदिशक्ति माताजी श्री निर्मला देव्या जय श्री माता जी ओ माय डिवाइन मादर श्री माता जी हेयर टुडे वी ऑल योर इनोसेंट चिल्ड्रेन बो डाउन एट योर लोटस फीट एंड सीक द परमिशन to meditate today now collectively we'll feel all the peace all the calmness and all the love flowing around us thank you mother for this beautiful experience very firstly we'll invite our divine mother in our heart oh mother kindly come and sit in my heart Come and sit in my heart, Shri Mata Ji. That's your place. We'll feel the cool breeze flowing in our heart. Bit of throbbing. in our heart all the calmness and peace in our heart indicates the arrival of shri mata ji we we'll again bow down at her lotus feet and will thank her oh mother thank you for coming in my heart and sitting here and blessing me we just enjoy this experience for a couple of seconds now we'll take our chitta our thoughts to our muladhara swadhishthan nabhi bhavasagar हृदय विशुद्धि हंसा 
Agya and Sahasrara. We will see Shri Mataji's lotus feet on our Sahasrara. Bow down again and we'll request Shri Mataji, O oh Mother, kindly be here on my Sahasrara always. Keep me in your attention, Shri Mataji. Keep me at your lotus feet. Keep blessing me. And forgive me for all my mistakes, Shri Mataji. We commit every day. Take me to the right path, Shri Mataji, where you want us to be. Show me the right path, Shri Mataji. Show me the right path. Teach me to learn to walk on the right path. Follow your preachings. Teach me, Shri Mataji. All our attention on our Sahasrara and we we'll listen to our Divine Mother's Amritvani. Thank you, Mother, for this beautiful life. Thank you so much, Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji, Jai Shri Mataji. Today, we are celebrating the Sahasrara Day. Perhaps we have not realized what a day it must have been. Without opening the Sahasrara, God itself was a myth. Religion itself was a myth. All talk about divinity was a myth. People believed in it, but it was just a belief. And the science, as it was put forward, was about to obliterate all the value system, all the <coughs> proof of God Almighty. If you see in the history, one after another, when science established itself, the people who are so-called in charge of the helm of affairs in the religion, in different religions, tried to cope with the findings of the science. <coughs> they tried to so show that all right, if it is said this much is in the Bible, and if it is wrong, we should correct it. Especially Augustine did that. And it started looking as if it's all a stupidity. It's these scriptures were just mythical. At least Quran itself, though had lots of things which were describing the biology of today. They could not believe that human beings were specially created by God. They thought it was just a matter of chance that one after another the animals acquired a situation by which they became human beings. <coughs> Thus, all the time, divinity was challenged. And there was no way of giving a proof of whatever is said in the Bible or 
in the Quran or in the Gita or in the Upanishads or in the Torah. Any one of these things could not be proved because it was still just a faith. Very, very few people got their realization and when they talked, people did not believe them and thought that they are just trying to say something which <coughs> they are using to propound their own theories. So the whole thing became a kind of a dead science. There was no science uh, of religion. People started thinking that what's the use of following these Ten Commandments or these strict rules of life because by following that you gain nothing, you lose all the fun of the life. And why to think of gaining some punyas also? And that is how all the time there was a big derailment of human value system. Also, these organized religions, these monothelic organized religions, started taking to course of gaining power or gaining money because they thought that's the only way you can control people and can go on. They were least bothered as to deliver the goods, whatever have been described in the Bible. Bible, of course, was tampered very much and has been a lot of changes in that. And a person like Paul and Peter, who joined together, tried to spoil most of the truth. Though Quran was not so much touched, but still is dealt more with the right side, <coughs> with the reproduction system and all those things. And so many things are still ambiguous. Now, simultaneously two things have happened. I don't know if you are aware of it or not. First thing that has happened is that now we have a new science of microbiology in which we have discovered that every cell has got a DNA tape. Every cell has got a program in it. As we have in a computer, a chip, every cell has got a tape in it, in a way that it is programmed. And according to that program, the development takes place. Now imagine the intricacy of the whole thing. So many computers are already programmed and all these cells have these in them. So a very uh, mysterious sort of thing has come up before the scientist and they cannot explain it. They cannot explain many things. But one of them is this. <coughs> now what Sir Yoga has done that it has proved that it is the will of God, it is the desire of God, the will of God which is doing all the work and it has been proved. All this Chaitanya, Adi Shakti is nothing but the will of God. And will of God is the one, is working out everything very harmoniously. I don't know if some of you must have read my book, first book, where I have described how this earth was created. There was a bang, but it was very harmonious and how it developed is through the will of God. So everything was done in a way that God's will was working. Now the will of God you are feeling on your fingertips. After realization now, you have discovered the absolute science, which is the will of God, which is an absolute science. You people know that we have cured people of through Sahaja Yoga. You also know giving bandhan and all that things work out. 
So many things work out automatically after realization that people don't want to believe. In the beginning, people would not believe when the scientists told them something. But now it is, you can see the science is always in the flux, all the time changing. One theory is again challenged, another theory is again challenged. But Sahaja Yoga has exposed you to that great truth of science which cannot be challenged, which is all there. So anybody who comes out with any a new proposal about defaming God or saying that there is no God, we can prove. Not that there is God, but everything, the creation of this earth, the creation of human beings and everything was done harmoniously by the will of God. If will of God has done everything, the human beings should not take any credit for discovering some things which are created by God. Supposing this carpet is made by somebody and we start discovering all the colors, what is so great, it is all there. You cannot create. So it is not the creation part of it so much important, but the fashioning of this world, whole thing, was done by the will of God. Now, if the will of God is so important, it has to be proved. And now through Sahaja Yoga, after the breaking of the Sahasrara, you have now for the first time felt the will of God, which is such an important thing. But for us it is come to us so Sahaj that we don't understand. <coughs> we just give the bandhan and the things work out <coughs> and we feel that the things have worked out so it is Bandhan which has worked out and we have managed everything. It's not so. It's much more than that. We have now become part and parcel of that big computer, of that will of God. We have become the medium or we can say the channels of that will of God. We are connected with that will of God which created all this universe. So everything we can manage because we have got the absolute science in our hand. The absolute science which will work out the betterment of the whole world. We can prove it to the scientist that there is a will of God which has done all this creation. Even evolutionary process is the will of God. Without His will, nothing could have happened. So many people used to say that not even a blade of grass moves without the will of God, which is a very true thing. And you have seen now, that the will of God we have got as <coughs> our own power. We can use it. So how important it is to be a surgery. Perhaps we don't realize how important it is to be a surgery. Surgery is not only for saying, other I'm full of joy, I'm enjoying myself, I got purified, everything is fine. But for what? Why did you get all these blessings? Why you have been cleansed so that this knowledge of will of God should be apparent in you? Not only that, should be a part and parcel of you. So we have to raise our level. We have to come up. For mediocre and ordinary people, it is really useless to give them Sahaja Yoga because they are good for nothing. They are not going to help us in any way because what is needed is now today that we should have people who can really manifest and reflect the will of God. And for that you can understand we have to have very strong people because this will has created this whole universe, the cosmos, this Mother Earth, everything is created by this will of God. <coughs> so now we are exposed to a new 
a dimension and that dimension is that we are ones who are channels of that will of God. So then, what is our duty and what should we do about it? As a result of Sahasrara being opened out, one thing, the illusions have vanished. What you call Sanskrit is Bhranti. Illusions have vanished. You should have no illusion as to the <coughs> existence of God Almighty, the power of His will and the truth about such. You should have no doubts at all. Minimum of minimum should be like that. But while using this power, you should be aware that this power is given to you because you are capable of handling it. Is it the highest power that you could think of? Take any governor, take any minister, anyone, they can be removed tomorrow. They can become corrupt. They can become <coughs> absolutely devoid of any knowledge of their own powers. There are many people who just get elected without knowing what they have to do. So this is not just a conversion of people. It's not only even transformation, but it is a new fashioning of a new human being which has come forward and which is capable of carrying the will of God further. <coughs> so, as a result of your realization, <coughs> what you have got? <coughs> the first thing that has happened is that your illusions have gone. You should have no illusions about God Almighty, His will, and that He is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. All His omnipotence has done this work. And as collective consciousness, you should also know that you are also omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. Omniscient is the thing that He sees everything, knows everything. Part of it, that power is also within you. So to prove His omnipresence, you have to be all the time aware that you are Sir Jogis. When I find even now, <coughs> Sir Jogis struggling about their wives, their children, their house, their jobs, I start wondering, what is their level now? Where are they? When are they going to take up the role of what they have got? So the omnipotent God who is everywhere, who has done all this, the will of God that has worked it out, has to work through you people. And you have to be very strong, very sensible, very wise, also very effective people. <coughs> the more effective you become, the more energy you will get. But still I feel that the Sahaja Yogis are more not taking the responsibility of understanding that they have to represent this God Almighty who is omnipresent, omniscient, who knows everything, who sees everything, and who is potent, means almighty. If you understand that this is what has happened after opening the Sastrara, that you have now got the power which has these three qualities in it. Say, now this big 
thing has to be supported by a strong pillars. But supposing if they are not strong, it will fall down. In the same way, such a great power which has come to you. For that we don't need very successful people. We don't need people who have a big name or those who have lots of money. What we need, people of character, people of understanding, of wisdom and of strength that whatever may come, I will stand by it. I will take to it. I'll cope with it. I'll change myself and improve myself. <coughs> so now illusion has been dispelled. I hope you all have got rid of your illusions. Also, you should have no illusions about yourself. If you have any illusions, you should leave Sahaja Yoga. But know that you are chosen for this purpose by God's will, that's why you are here, and you have to take it up, the responsibility of understanding this science which is absolute and working it out yourself, for yourself as well as for others. You have felt my love, but your love must be felt because God is love. So your love must be felt by others. Others must feel that you are compassionate, loving, understanding. That's all the time this will of God is flowing through you and you have to work it out in such a manner that people should know that you are a saint that this power is flowing through you. Then the second thing that has happened to you is that, not the illusion about God and about yourself, second thing that has happened that you have understood the integration, <coughs> that in the world there is complete integration which is existing. Normally if you see the children, they have their own natural innate understanding. They know. If you see normally a good child would always like to share his things, would like to love another child, if there's another little child is there, would like to protect that child, naturally. It won't think whether it has black hair or red hair or blue hair. Naturally, innately, a child feels that way. Also, if you take another child, suppose, who is a little baby, they know that one should be careful about the privacy of the body. Children don't want to be made nude before others. No child likes it. Innately, they know. So all these innate qualities are within you. Children don't like to steal it. They don't know what a stealing is. They have no idea of stealing. I've seen also children that if they go to a place which is very beautiful, in somebody's house, they will always try to keep the beauty of that place. But if it is already shabby, they don't mind. So innately all these qualities are there. I think the countries which are supposed to be underdeveloped have so many of these <coughs> qualities within them, which are innately built within us. Innocence is innately built. So the will of God built up, first and foremost thing was innocence, the auspiciousness. The first thing he did was to create Sri Ganesha or I would say she, because it's the will of God, is Adi Shakti. And all this was created, first of all, to make the whole world very beautiful. All these innate qualities were also placed within you. All those deities were placed within you, were specially made human beings, that they should become saintly people, that they should have their saintly innate sense. But it happened in the countries which developed 
that our brain was bombarded by all kinds of television, all kinds of things, and we became very, uh, we can say, <coughs> we became very uh, vulnerable. We started getting into the ideas of others. Anybody who is dominating could dominate us. It's not only Hitler who dominated people. We also see today how much we are dominated if you really detach yourself from this world. For example, fashions. Certain things that come up, people cannot give up at any cost. They cannot take to something that is sensible because it's a fashion. For example, nowadays there's a fashion say to have such a lot small skirt. You can't get a long skirt anyway. Everybody has to wear that kind of a skirt. Otherwise you are not in, you are not in the mad house. Now this <coughs> kind of thing is bombarded on us morning till evening. So first of all, we become slaves of these entrepreneurs. Whatever they give us now, I was told that in Belgium you cannot get anything fresh, you have to take everything from the supermarket, which is all tinned. Gradually what is happening to us, we are getting absolutely artificial. The food is artificial, the dress is artificial, our whole attitude becomes artificial. Because we are so much bombarded by advertisement, by all kinds of outside influences, that we just get lost and we forget what is our innate sense, which is being dominated by all these modern things. So adding up to the science also there is a big uh, progress in another direction that we can solve, call the money became very important. Once the money becomes important, then all your entrepreneur uh, become important because they know how to make money and be fool you all the time. Today you have this thing, tomorrow you have that thing, today you change this and have this thing. But those people who are innately built, they do not change. They have their dresses of the same type, they do not change. On the contrary, they find it very difficult to get out of their traditional achievements and they don't want to change themselves. So for Sahaja Yogis it is important to see and watch if they are getting this slavery from the entrepreneurs in the modern times. Then the thoughts. So many books we read which gives you thoughts, which are some mad uh, rambling, I would say, of some mad man, like Freud. How could Freud influence the West? <clears throat> because you have lost your innate sense and you accept it. You accepted that and that's how Freud became you are sort of a uh, Jesus Christ. He became the most important thing. Sex became the most important thing. I mean, it's so simple. With little common sense you can understand that at every moment we are <coughs> put into this kind of a of a domination by these few domineering people who have certain ideas and they put forward. Anybody puts any idea, <coughs> for example, Saad or Satre or anyone, that idea starts becoming, oh, he said it. Who is he? What is his life? Just see for yourself what sort of a man is. With little common sense, but with your will that you have now, will of God, which has fashioned the whole world, which has fashioned you, <coughs> every cell within you has been fashioned by God Almighty. And what are you doing is to play into the hands of these entrepreneurs. <coughs> they have realized that these vulnerable people are very good for having uh, as their disciples, I should say, to make money to befool them. 
Now, on this side, you have such a great power. You are chosen for such a great thing. And on the other side, you have this kind of slavery. So try to understand that your innate qualities were lost. But luckily, by the Kundalini awakening and by breaking out the Sastrara, all these innate qualities which will look like lost, like your innocence, like your creativity, like your religion within, <coughs> like your compassion <coughs> and love for the humanity, like your power of judgment, wisdom, all these great qualities which we thought were lost were nothing but they were in a dormant state. They all got awakened one by one. I had, don't have to tell you, don't drink this, don't eat this, don't do that. You yourself realize that this is wrong. You yourself know what is good for you. And still if you want to do wrong, you can go ahead. But already there is a light within you to see for yourself what is good and what is bad. It has come because of this sastrara being opened out to this new dimension of new knowledge. This is not new, it is all innately built within you. Now all those innate qualities are manifesting and you are enjoying them. So now you have to get out of your petty ideas and petty things. <coughs> People are reporting to me something very funny. I can't believe Sir Yogis can do like that, that they run away with the plates that I have bought or they run away with the cups, they throw things here and there, all over the places they are throwing things. How can you behave like this? I mean, this is so stupid and so insipid. If you do not have a proper discipline of life yourself, you cannot carry the will of God. You cannot. <clears throat> but I'm not going to tell you, <clears throat> do this or do that. I respect your freedom and I just want that your own Kundalini should awaken that wisdom in you, that greatness in you, that glory in you and you start understanding what is our innate quality. So it will purify. Once you are purified completely like you see, if you have some gold which is not pure, you put it in the fire, the gold is separated. In the same way, the fire of Kundalini cleanses you completely, makes you absolutely clean and you start seeing your own glory, your own nature, your own greatness. So the integration part comes to you easily. <coughs> you start integrating. First of all, we used to have <coughs> Sahaja Yogis, say from, some from England, some from Spain, some from here, they would always have different groups. They would never sit together. You could make out this is English sitting here, they are sitting here, they are sitting here. And they would form a group. But now it's not so. Now I find they all are becoming integrated. The integration of human beings is the most important thing for Sahaja Yoga. That comes by understanding, not by your intelligence, but by innate intel understanding that all human beings are made by God, by His will. And we have no right to despise anyone. The second integration that has come within you is that all religions, all religions are born on the same tree of spiritual life. That all religions are to be worshipped. All incarnations, all <coughs> prophets, all scriptures are to be worshipped. There are defects, there are problems with those scriptures which can be corrected. 
So gradually you start entering into the subtler side of divinity to understand that all these people have worked hard to create today the atmosphere for Sahaja Yoga. And no religion is to be despised and no religion is to be attacked, which is a very, very uh, absolutely a unreal thing. And you are working it out a very unreal theory which doesn't exist in the divine plan. So this is how we finish all fundamentalism. Fundamentalists are the ones who believe that this is written in this book, this is written in this book, and that we, we, because we read this book, we are something better. Anybody can read any book, but it's so great. Same, I would say, in Sahaja Yoga, people should not become fundamentalists. Be very careful. Because that's what you are born like that. I mean, I don't know, it's not your innate quality, but the way you are made that way, you are fashioned yourself that way, that you start also making Sahaja Yoga sometimes a fundamental. Mother said so. Do not use me anywhere. Mother said so is a way you want to dominate others. You yourself say, because now you have a right, you have an individuality in Sahaja Yoga. You can say what you have to say yourself. But don't say that Mother has said it, because anybody can start like that, Christ said it, a uh, clergyman or a say, pope can stand upon his uh, own platform and say that Christ has said it. They can just arbitrarily use all these things. So nobody has business to use me arbitrarily. Whatever you have to say, you say yourself. But don't ever quote me as that mother has said it, or in this book such and such is written, so this is the line that is important. You are not bound by any line, by whatever I say. It is you who has to stand up and see for yourself what you have to say. Because you have to use now your will, and for that you have to develop yourself to have pure will, the pure desire of God Almighty. The integration not only outward but inward. Like, first of all, whatever we did, our mind used to say one thing, our heart used to say another thing, our brain used to say another thing. Now what has happened that all these three things have become one. So whatever your brain says is absolutely acceptable to your heart, absolutely acceptable to your attention. So you yourself, you have become now integrated. Many people write, Mother, I want to do it, but I can't do it. Mother, I wish my desire to do it, but I can't do it. Not now. Now you are completely integrated and you can easily do the whole thing very well. If you want to examine yourself, you should try to find out, am I integrated or not? Whatever I'm doing, am I doing with my full heart or not? With my full attention or not? <clears throat> I've seen that you do with full heart and full intelligence, but full attention is not there. Still the attention, which is the first thing that was enlightened, is not fully used. So the whole attention should be absolutely there, that I have to do this thing with full attention. Otherwise the integration is not complete. Integration is partial. So these three things have to be completely integrated. So the integration of all the chakras comes in. Like whatever you do has to be auspicious. Whatever you do has to be with full attention. Whatever you do has to be absolutely religious. So like that, all these centers are being absolutely one integrated power that you have. So the whole life should be integrated. 
Now say somebody's husband is not that level or somebody's wife is not of that level. <coughs> you shouldn't bother. You should just bother about yourself. Don't expect anything from anybody else. It is your duty which is important. You have to fulfill your duty and you have to work it out yourself. Unless and until you understand that it is your individual being which has achieved it and it's the individual being which has to realize it. It's the individual being that has to become one, integrated with the rest of them. If you start putting things, upon many times I've seen, if I say something, people start thinking that I'm saying for somebody else. They never take it for themselves. So, not we have to see what is my gain. I've got financial gains, say, I've got uh, physical gains, I've got mental gains, I've got joy, happiness. That's not the only thing. That should not be the only criteria. But what you should have is the understanding of your own personality which is being specially fashioned many, many lives for you to come in this life to get your Realization, to do the further work of will of God. Every moment when you see a miracle taking place, you do realize that it is all done by Param Chaitanya. Well, what is Param Chaitanya? Is the will of Adi Shakti. And what is Adi Shakti? Is the will of God. <coughs> so it's all whatever is done, is all fixed entities we can call them, or these vibrations are like we can say DNA tips. They all know how they have to fashion. See, today it's very sunny, everybody is surprised, how can they have? So many things happen like this. The other day we had heaven, it was absolutely sunny. So the whole cosmos is working for you. You are on the stage now and you have to see to it. But if you don't have faith in yourself, <coughs> if you are not confident as to what you are, how can you help? How can you work out yourself and work out all the problems of the world which are created only by human beings? So we have to absolutely uh, overthrow <coughs> all these dominations on us. First from science, we can prove everything that Sahaja Yoga, whatever it has said about science has been proved. <coughs> so we can through science, which is just all the ways, all the time in the flux, it's changing all the time. Then the so-called religions that we have, so-called religions, because people who have been Catholics, who have been Protestants, who have been Hindus or Muslims or this and that, they all have got that thing on their heads. And this has to be thrown away. <coughs> we have to become a new personality. After Realization, as I said, you become like a lotus from the mud. So now you have become lotuses and the lotuses have to throw away all this dead mud, otherwise fragrance won't be there. That one has to achieve, is to throw away all these shackles which are, <coughs> which are killing you. which are of uh, no use but a burden and beautiful lotuses as you are. You have to understand that the whole fashioning has been done so carefully with such uh, sweetness, with such delicacy. So first of all, we must have respect for ourselves. We must have affection and love for others and we must have, respect means we must have discipline. We have to have the discipline because if you respect yourself, 
will definitely discipline yourself and you will make it available. <coughs> now as uh, you can realize that from my life itself, that I work very hard, travel a lot, much more than any one of you can do. Because I have the will that I have to bring this world to that state of enjoyment, to that state of happiness, to that state of divinity, where they realize what is their glory, what is the glory of their Father. So I work very hard and I never even think that something will go wrong with me or this will happen, what will happen. I never have bothered you about my family life, about my children, about anyone. Whatever problems I had, I am dealing with them myself. But here I get such big, big letters from Sajogis, writing about their daughter, their son, this thing, that thing. Another thing is attachment to family is the biggest burden on your heads. And all the time <coughs> you are worried about your children, you are worried about this, you are worried about that. That's not your responsibility. Please try to understand. That's the responsibility of God Almighty. You can't do better than Him, can you? But when you try to take the responsibility, He says, all right, look after and the problems start. Detachment is the word one should understand in a proper sense. When I ask people, why do you throw things here and there, say, so we are detached. Wonderful way. And what about your children? You cling on to them. What about your own things? You cling on to them. For a small little thing, they'll bother my head. And, well, it belongs to me or to Sahaja Yoga, then they'll have a very nice time with it and throw it away wherever they can. I mean, this kind of irresponsibility, how can you call them divine? How can they be saintly people? Saintly people not only are responsible for themselves, but for everyone. Very slowly, smoothly, sweetly, with great affection, I have brought you to this life. I didn't ask you to go to Himalayas or stand on your heads or to donate all your properties to me, nothing. We have managed it in a very, very beautiful manner. Now further, when you have to go further, then you have to understand that your duties are to be fulfilled by you and by nobody else. But these duties are done by you, are towards your family, towards your house, towards this, towards that. No duties towards such. So when you were, before Sahaja Yoga you were not attached to anyone, in the sense you were only attached to yourself, self-centered. Now you have widened your circle a little more, that now you are attached to your wife, to your children. But that's just the same. <coughs> that is also selfish. Because they are your children, you think. They are not your children, they are the children of God. I hope all of you are intelligent enough to understand your responsibility and work it out. This is a very important thing that has happened to you, that Sahasrara has opened. Now you can prove the existence of God, His will, everything to the whole world. Nobody can challenge Sahaja Yoga. <coughs> Those scientists who will challenge can be told. Anybody, whether you are a scientist, economist, politician, anything, everything can be explained in the light of Sahaja Yoga and can be proved that there is only one politics, that is of God, one economics, that is of God, and there is only one religion that is of God, is Vishwanirmala. It can be proved. There's nothing to be afraid of or to worry about. This all can be proved to the scientist 
and to the other intellectuals and to some few uh, people if they want to listen to us. If they don't want to listen to us, forget it. Because we are so powerful, why should you worry about them? But if they are willing to listen to us, then it's better that we tell them, now we have discovered this great power. And if it works out, if this great power works out, then only we can really fashion the whole world in a new way. I have great hopes from you people, but the seriousness with which you should take such. For example, even meditation people don't do. Simple thing like meditation you people don't do, I can't understand. How will you grow without meditation? Unless and until you become thoughtlessly aware, you cannot grow. So you have to, you have to at least meditate morning, evening. There are many people who are not even collective by temperament. If they are staying in an ashram, they just think that ashram life is no good. And they, such people should really get out of Sahaja Yoga because they have not yet understood what is Sahaja Yoga is. Without collectivity, how will you grow? How will you assemble your power? You see, you know very well that in a Sangha, in a group, in combining together, only you can be strong. It's a fact that if you have one stick, you can break it, but if you put many sticks together, you cannot break it. But there are still people I know who are still not so much in collectivity. Shows how poor they are in their understanding of their own self. And they are telling me that, Mother, we don't want to stay in the ashram now anywhere more. So they should get out of surgery. Without the collectivity, you cannot grow. Without the discipline of Sahaja Yoga, you cannot grow. It's better to have ten people of good quality than to have thousand useless people. That's what is the will of God. So now, as you are today here, so many people, I'm really enamored to see so many people out there. And we have done so much of uh, our growth and grown out of all those nonsensical things that we were following. But today we have to take a vow that I'll now fashion my life according to the will of God. Absolutely. And dedicate myself to that. No family, no other considerations, just forget it. Nothing so important. Everything can be looked after by the will of God. So if you just try to follow the will of God. Your children will look looked after. Everything will be looked after. You don't have to worry for anything. And that works. Just try to understand that you have problems because you don't want to give those problems to God. You want to keep it to themselves. That's why you have problems. If you decide that, no, I just want to give these problems to the God's will, finished. Also there are some who want to say that we are not so capable, whether we can't do it. Saying like this also is stupid. You test yourself, see for yourself. So first of all, one has to understand, why do we say such a thing? Maybe that we are very money-oriented, that we want to have money to ourselves or something like that. Or some people are there who talk of business also in surgery. There must be something like a money orientation or some sort of a material attachment that they say that we are not capable, we cannot change. The second could be this mamatva, as they call it, the attachment, your family, children, this, that. Or this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. This could be the second thing that you think that you are not uh, uh, bold enough or you are not strong enough to do such. Thirdly, could be that you are still playing with your old habits and that you are enjoying your life without virtues. There can be some reason like that. So just try to look in. Why am I behaving like this? Why am I not getting into the same beautiful path of 
my ascent as everybody has got it. If we introspect, we'll find out that there's something wrong with me that I think I am not capable of doing. You are capable of doing everything. You just try this and enjoy it. So most important thing now remains is that you should become a proper, strong, compassionate vehicle of God's will. So, then what is most important, of course, I agree that you do my puja because that helps you a lot, no doubt. But other things are not important. So many other things you people tell me is not of importance. Main thing is that you should all ascend higher and higher and compete with each other in getting into higher situation. As it is, I think, in such a short time, we have achieved a lot, no doubt, but still we have to speed up and work it out. I am sure that this new science, or we can say the which is the absolute science, will one day outshadow the other science and tell people that this is what it is, it is in your hands, you work it out. So today is the day we are celebrated by which we have opened absolutely a new dimension, a, absolutely a venue of great divinity of the proofs of divine. And this is something so great that we can really finish all the illusions they have about themselves, about their ego. We can manage that, that power you all have. May God bless you.